My name is Lee McIntyre and I'm a research fellow at the Center for Philosophy and History of Science. And after I wrote my book, Post-Truth, my next book was called The Scientific Attitude. Uh, it was a little bit more academic book than Post-Truth because I'm a philosopher of science and I was interested in this debate that academics have been having for the last hundred years on what is science and why is science a, a special way of knowing and should it be a special way of knowing? And there's this problem at the core of the philosophy of science to solve something called the demarcation problem, to say, what is it about science that's so special? Philosophers of science have never solved this. The problem with that is that that has, I felt, created an opportunity for science deniers and pseudoscientists to come into the breach and say, well, look, you can't even say what's special about science. You can't even define it. So how are you able to say that I'm a science denier? How are you able to say that I don't know what I'm talking about? So what I wanted to do in that book was try to solve the underlying problem without solving the philosophical problem, the demarcation problem. Because I think the actual problem here was to say, you know, what's special about science? And it turned out not to be anything about its logic or its method. It turned out, I think, to be something about its practice. I define the scientific attitude as the idea that it's this ethos, this community ethos of science, where scientists care about evidence and they think that they're willing to change their mind on the basis of new evidence. That to me is what's really essential about science. And that helps you to see, I think, also what's wrong with pseudoscience and what's wrong with science denial. Um, I really admire the work of Karl Popper, maybe the most famous philosopher of science ever, who tried to solve the demarcation problem through a logical way. But I don't think he hit it, but along the way, he hit on this idea that it was the critical attitude that scientists had uh, that was core to the account that he came up with later. And so, to me, that was really the um, kind of an homage to uh, Karl Popper, but also something that I think really answered this question of what's wrong with science deniers. Karl Popper's main question is always, what evidence, if I had it in my back pocket, could show, could prove to you that you were wrong? And if you can't say what that evidence is, then you're not a scientist, because every scientist should be able to do that. So this is why I wanted to focus the scientific attitude on this idea that what was really special about science was the attitude toward evidence and checking one's claim against the evidence, whether you did it yourself or whether it's the community. My joke is always that the scientific attitude is what keeps scientists honest even if they were honest in the first place.